In this video, we're gonna build this timeline animation using Apple Motion. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. As always, if you don't get the project browser, you can go up to File, then select New from Project Browser. Due to the nature and some significant bugs I've been running into with Apple Motion on this project, we're just gonna work with the regular motion project and export it out as a video later. Most of the time, I would select something like the Final Cut title, but that has been causing a lot of headache. Over on the right side, I'm gonna recommend you set your preset and frame rate at whatever you typically like to work with in Final Cut Pro, for this project, I'm gonna select 2997. I'm gonna leave my duration as 10 seconds and push open. Of course, to create a timeline, we're gonna need some numbers. Let's go over to the left side and locate the generators. Now we can find this text generators folder and locate the numbers. I'm just gonna click and drag this into the group in our layers panel and that should properly center it for us. After that, we can go to the inspector and locate the format settings. The first thing we'll do is drag up the scale so we can actually see our numbers here. And I also want to adjust the alignment to be centered up. With our number in place, we can actually start to create the numbers we wanna work with. Let's go over to our generator settings. And first, we'll locate this animate checkbox. This is where the first of many bugs on this project came into play. And I actually needed to disable the animate checkbox and manually animate this for it to work. Finding our value slider, let's set the first value to be whatever year we wanna start with. So I wanna start with the year 2000. I'm gonna to click to add a keyframe, and then I'm going to move forward 24 frames because we're gonna have added 24 numbers. So I wanna to move to the year 2024. The easiest way to do that is to make sure everything is deselected in motion, then push shift plus and type in 24. That'll move your playhead forward 24 frames, then we can select our number and click to add another keyframe. After that, I'm gonna type in the value of 2024. And so now over 24 frames, we should have the simple animation take place. The last thing we need to change with this number is the thousands separator. Of course, this is to signify a year, so let's just disable that. With our number all set up, it's time to create all of the other 24 numbers that are going to sit alongside it. Fortunately, this is super easy in motion with replicators. Select your numbers and then go up to the top right and select replicate. It has now created this amorphous blob of crazy numbers, so let's fix that. Going to the left side, let's find the shape setting. I'm gonna change it from a rectangle over to a line. Next, we'll find the start point. It's currently set to offset by negative 100 pixels. We want this to be directly in the middle on the starting number, so let's change that to just be zero. The setting after that is the end point. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first I wanna add as many points as will be necessary for this animation. Let's locate the points and type in a value of 25. The reason I'm selecting 25 instead of 24, which is the amount of numbers we have, is because we are also including zero. With that set to 25, we can go back to the endpoint setting. I'm gonna click and drag and hold shift and we'll see that this is just going to create space between each of the individual numbers. I happen to find that 20,000 was a really good value for the spacing on this, but this is completely up to you and what you want for your project. If I were to adjust the offset, you'll see that all of these are the same 2024, and if I go to the beginning of the project, you'll see that that animation is playing out over all of those numbers. What we want instead is for each number to receive a different frame of the animation. Going on down to the very bottom, you'll see that there's this play frames. We don't want all of these to be animated at the same time. We just want them to hold one single frame of the animation. So let's go ahead and disable that checkbox and now they will all be locked to 2000. Next, you'll see that there's this source frame offset. We gave one frame to each number that we wanted. So let's set this to a value of one and now they should all be offset by one singular number. I'll go ahead and reset my offset, so I'm starting at the zero mark, and now we can add in some animation keyframes. Let's take our playhead and go forward about one second on the timeline, then I'm going to click to add a keyframe under the offset. Next, I'm gonna move forward about five seconds, so that will get us to the six second mark, and we can click to add yet again another keyframe. I'm just gonna type in a value of negative 100% here on the offset. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I animating with 
the offset parameter instead of going into the properties and animating the position. Well, this actually comes with a lot of benefits. The biggest one being that at any time with my endpoint, I can click and drag and adjust that spacing and we will always end on this final number of 2024. So this just gives us further flexibility down the road by using the offset parameter. You also might be asking yourself, well, how will I animate vertically if I wanted the number to be sliding up and down? Well, all you would do for that is instead of adjusting the X parameter, we would actually be offsetting with the Y parameter. So you'll see how that's going down vertically. So if you want these numbers to be sliding in a vertical fashion, just offset with the Y parameter. So pushing play, we should now have this basic animation of all of the numbers flying through until we finally hit 2024. But the animation is really rigid and ugly. We want to add some nice dynamic animation to it. Let's open up our keyframe inspector. You can also get Get that with command eight and now you'll see both of the keyframes here in position i'm going to select both of them right click and then we'll go to interpolation and select bezier this is going to give us some nice animation handles and that should be sliding really nicely but i want to make this look even more fluid we want it to start off really slow build up a ton of momentum and then slow down. So let's select this first keyframe and find the handle. I'm gonna hold shift and just drag this over to the right side, create a very severe S shape. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this lower keyframe, holding shift, dragging to the left. And so now taking a look at these different keyframes, we can see this sharp S shape. It starts off really slow, builds some momentum, and then slows down to 2024. So this is looking super cool, but I also want to add some timeline indentation here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that by first creating our basic shape. I'm going to get the Bezier tool, and we'll find the center of our 2000 mark. I'm going to click, hold shift, and then make a second point, and then I'll push enter, and that will create this basic line. Next, I wanna create somewhat of a T shape. So let's find our Bezier point, and I'm going to click in the center of that line, holding shift, and we'll click all the way to the center of the next number, and push enter. So now we've created this basic line, we could of course go in and adjust the height of it if we wanted to, somewhere in there is looking pretty good. And now with these two Bezier points created, I'm going to select them both, right click, and create an entirely new group. We can just call this Timeline Points. Now I'm going to collapse that group and select this original replicator group, which we can rename to be Numbers, and I'm going to push Command D. That way we have the exact same replicator with all of the same animations already pre-applied. Selecting the Numbers Generator, I want to swap out what the object source is. Right now it's set to Numbers, but we want it instead to be the timeline points that we just created. So I'm just going to click and drag the timeline points down into the object source. And just like that, we've created a replicated version of those timeline points. I can go ahead and hide the original object. Let's go ahead and rename this to be just timeline. Now we can go over to our properties and offset this using the X and Y parameters. I'll just slide this down over something like that. So if we push play now, we should see those animation points moving right along with all of the previous points that have been added. Now, I don't want all of the numbers to be showing at the same time. I want them to slowly fade off as they get to the sides. Let's collapse the group that's containing everything. And we could just call this the mask group. With our masking group selected, we can go down to the mask tool and just create a box surrounding our 2000 number. Then I want it to be fading off as it gets to the sides. So let's go over to our mask Masking settings, find the feather and drag this up. I'm not really liking that 100% value, so maybe we'll just keep on dragging it up until we're happy. That's looking pretty good. So pushing play, it starts off on the year 2000 and moves all the way up to the year 2024. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you might wanna check out this video where I show you how to build a Rings of Power map animation using Apple Motion. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.